All right, as promised, I want to have Jordan Spurgeon on, on the documentary. It is out. It aired last night on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel. It's on the website. Tonight it'll be on Bally Sports Arizona following the Diamondbacks Kansas City game. ALS to Ashes, the Corey Nocta story documentary, Spurge together with Brandy Aguilar. I want to have Jordan come on for a couple of minutes just to chop this up. When you first heard this story, what were your thoughts? thoughts on it and did it come to fruition the way that you wanted it to on the screen yeah i think this uh first started late may maybe early june you had gotten a call from ron wolfley about Corey, just saying hey i know this guy he's battling this um he really wants to share his story i think you guys should do something on it so he dropped it in a group text with some of us on the team and i saw it and i was like that sounds really interesting and at the time, you were like um, coming up with a schedule for summer um, for different hosting things. I saw I was hosting a show in early July, and I figured, okay, let me talk to the family. Let me talk to Ron, and you know, I can put together a little mini documentary. I thought that was all I had in me was maybe a five-minute documentary. And then uh, Ron, first off, like went to Amish country and disappeared for a bit. So I couldn't get him by that show. So I was already like, okay, well, that's off the table. Um, and then I finally sat down with Corey and Kimberly, maybe three weeks or a month after you had told me about it, just kind of slowly talking to them and calling Corey on the phone and just kind of getting a story more before going to sit down with him. And uh, when me and Brandy went to their house, I think we sat down for about an hour. We talked a little bit before the shoot. We talked a lot after the shoot with them. And uh, we both kind of walked out and were like, yeah, this is a, a full documentary. We don't know how long, but it's not some five minute like short form, really in-depth story. It's it's a full documentary on just them, just the way Corey presented himself, the way Kimberly um, like showed how much support she had, the way they talked about their fire crew. I knew the fire department would be great. Um, so that day, I think I called you and I think you could hear it in my voice that I was excited that there was a really good story to tell here and it wasn't going to be some two week thing that is five minutes. And so, yeah, we talked about it and I told you, give me till the end of August and uh, we'll put it into a full documentary and see where it ends up. And here we are. It's like two months later now. And uh, it made it and it, it did what it, I think it was supposed to do, which was um, really share Corey's story and, and spread a little bit of awareness for for ALS, which was really important. How easy or difficult was it to get Corey to jump on board to talk about himself in something that looks like on the surface is not going to end well? Yeah, it was actually really easy. I think that was part of the reason why Ron had called you. Corey was very much ready to do this. Um, they even mentioned the other day when I went back to their house um, that they were looking to have just somebody put something together. So they had something for the kids and for their family when that time, unfortunately, does come and, and Corey's no longer here. And so when Ron had mentioned that and then I had gotten in contact with them, they were like, oh, this is great. We really want to do this and talk about it. Because one thing I got from him almost immediately from talking to him is he knows that what he's going through sucks and he knows it's, it's not going to be a happy ending, but he knows there's other people going through it and he wants to, you know, spread that awareness and, and, and let other people know what's helping him. And it's not that he's necessarily slowing the disease. I mean, we, we can get more into that later, but doctor did say he is sort of a slower progressor. Mm -hmm. um, but the support system he has, I think is the most important part, no matter what you're going through. Um, I know cancer is a little bit different than ALS because people can beat cancer and ALS you can't, but when you have the support system, it helps you. And I think that was apparent and he just wanted to showcase that like immediately. So he was all on board um, with just sharing his story with us. How about you on putting this story together? Because you've had cancer within your family, right? Did this yeah. story hit you differently because of that? I would say it would a little bit. I think I kind of got attached to it. Like, like I said, immediately when we left the house and they mean Brandy sat outside the house for 20 minutes and I was already like attached and like seeing the vision. Um, and so it hit kind of close to home. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, cancer is a little bit different, but then even, you know, just talking to people about it, I, in the middle of this documentary, I got to go on a family trip to kind of get away for a week out in Florida. Um, it's kind of, you know, you want to see grandparents before, you know, their time comes as well. And so we had a big family trip with family from Boston and California and everywhere we met there. Cool. And I didn't notice, or I didn't know that my step-grandpa, he had four family members, his sisters, his mom, um, a brother and a cousin, they all died from ALS. And it was something that I would have never known or found out because no one talks about ALS. I've never talked about it. I knew it was Lou Gehrig's disease. And so this kind of brought that to the forefront. And so I've had so many conversations um, that's kind of just been eye-opening as to, you know, people that I know that have been affected. I, I honestly had no, no clue at all before this. And so I think that was really, really eye-opening. 
ALS to Ashes, the Corey Nocta story documentary. It is up on the website. It's on our YouTube channel. It will be on Bally Sports all week. Jordan Spurgeon put it together along with Brandy Aguilar. And Spurge joins us for a few minutes. Tell me about Kimberly going in and Kimberly during all of this and what you observed, the wife. Yeah, she's she's very, very strong. I mean, she's a nurse, so she comes from that background of kind of understanding things. Um, her and Corey, this is something that we weren't able to fit into the doc. They they knew each other in high school. They went to high school together. They're both wow. Arizona natives. They both kind of went their separate ways. They weren't really like close or anything like that, but they knew of each other. Um, and then they kind of reconvened after their own, you know, previous relationships with other people and having kids with other people. And they kind of met, I think she said in her story, that was really funny. Um, she like, or he said that she Facebook stalked him and that's how they yeah. kind of got together. She denies that a little bit, but um, <laughs> No, immediately. She just was very much, you could tell, um, really the focal point of that household. She's taking care of everything. She does a lot of the paperwork for him. She's really keeping everything on check. She's being there for him. Um, she's talking to the firefighters to help, you know, some certain surprises they plan for him and certain things like that, as well as still working. Like She's still working as a nurse, which is tiring and taxing as of itself. And then to have to deal with this and know that you're in your second long relationship like this. And, you know, it might not be something that lasts forever at this point. Like maybe you think it would when you get married. So I can tell it's very, very hard on her. Um, but she really just shoulders it and embraces what it is. And like Corey said, they just both want to just, you know, soak up as much time as they can together and just enjoy the time they have. And I really respect that, that perspective that they've come um, during this together. Just the fact that they're willing to know what's going to happen, but still be, able to just be present and enjoy what they do have. A couple other questions. So the fire station where these everybody's gathered and there's check presentations that are made and the firehouse is erupting with joy and emotion. I saw tears there. I was there that day off to the side. Putting that together, how did that work? You have, you've got the Cardinals, you have Desert Financial, you have the Firefighters Union. I mean, you have all these people that are there to to help them out because the bills have to be staggering and, and Ron started his GoFundMe on this too. And just that day and putting that together. Yeah, that day I, you had reached out to Brandy and I and said, Hey, I, you know, I met with Jeff Mishi, the president and CEO of Desert Financial and told him about the story and they want to get involved with a random act of kindness. What can we do? And so we ran through a few ideas. We thought, okay, maybe we bring Jeff to the house and, you know, bring the check and we just kind of surprise. And then I, at that point, I had already gone to the fire station once uh, to interview about six of the firefighters and they fed me lunch and we hung out for four or five hours. So I already knew just how tight knit they were. I've always heard about it because my roommate's family, his dad, his brother, they're both firefighters hmm. um, out in California and Carlsbad and now Valley Center. Um, so I've kind of heard of that culture before, but I've never really been in there and experienced it. And so I saw that culture. And so thinking on it more, when you mentioned that Desert Financial wanted to be involved, I go, we have to just surprise them at the fire station. Uh, so we got in contact with Courtney at Desert Financial, who was kind of their in charge of their random acts of kindness um, stuff. And so we met with her on a Zoom and she said, hey, we'd love to get the Cardinals involved too. And we're like, okay, cool. Like, let's do this. And they said, we're only going to do it if the Cardinals, you know, want to get financially involved. We don't want to just do the hoopla where Big Red shows up and we're just the Cardinals there and that's it. And so they talked to them, got them to get financially involved as well and bring out players um, and jerseys and all that stuff. So yeah. the next step from there was, I think it took me three days to confirm the date. Like we, we were told, okay, August 12th, 10 AM. That's, that's the time that Jeff can be there. Let's get it done that day. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to figure out how to tell Corey and Kim without that. So I called the Goodyear Fire Department, left a voicemail, um, like their corporate office or whatever. And then uh, Matt Rainey, who's the battalion chief, and he's an interim, whatever's higher up than that too right now. Uh, he called back and said, hey, like I played football with Corey and now we're in the Goodyear Fire Department together. Like I've been here a long time. Um, we want to help. And he goes, what can I do? And I go, uh, find a way to not lie necessarily, but get Corey <laughs> get to the fire station on the on the 12th at 10 a.m., uh, with no explanation of what it is. And so I think he texted her and she said, Oh, can I come for dinner? And he goes, Nope, you have to be here at 10 AM. Sorry. Get here at 10. She's like, okay. She canceled plans and they got there. And then, yeah. And then we kind of planned it out when we got there and everybody was there like an hour before Corey and Kim just organizing things. And yeah. And then you'll see in the documentary, they come out the car and just walk in and it was just a it's very emotional. Yeah. Very, overflow. Very, yeah. There was just, 
emotion running all over it. You went down the path of education on ALS. As you said earlier, it's not something people know about. There were some parts of this, from my understanding in talking with Brandy, and I haven't talked to you about it yet. I'll just do it here. You guys learned a lot. There are some trials. There's some things behind the scenes. Fill me in on that. Yeah. When we talked to Dr. Levine, who's one of the head ALS researchers and physicians or doctors here um, in Arizona, he had a lot to say about kind of what they're doing. So we, a lot of it's trial runs. Um, they're figuring out different things. So we didn't really include that in the documentary. It just wasn't the right place. But if you head over to the website, we also wrote an article um, to go with this. And at the bottom, we wrote a sidebar. Brandy actually wrote the sidebar and we called it Finding a Cure. Um, and it basically just explains a little bit like the biggest breakthrough, quote unquote, they found. And even he said it's not much of a breakthrough, but it could be something was that they're finding that there is a gene that potentially um, causes ALS in a, a certain amount of people. And so it's a genetic thing almost. And so they're running an eight year test um, where they're basically finding healthy people that have had family members with ALS. They test for the gene. They they have the gene. And then they're shutting it off and seeing if that person will still end up with ALS years down the road. And so they're in the middle of that, which medically is honestly above like what I can handle, but it sounds promising. And the way Dr. Levine told us about it, it seems like that's something where it's still not going to give a cure for ALS and they don't know when they'll get it because they still don't know exactly what causes it beyond that gene in certain people. Um, but that that test is something that they're working hard on to see if they can, you know, find a way to get some answers for at least some people with ALS by preventing it before it happens. That's great. That's great. You tie that in. What's next? Just, yeah, what's next? I'm gonna... What's next? Do you have another doc in you? Does this make you want to do more docs? I mean, sometimes people just need to get away and sometimes you just fall into them. Where's this at for you? Yeah, I definitely think uh, I have more docs than me. I think this is now one year to the day of the first doc I worked on, the Zach Hoffpower doc, I think aired August 23rd last year. So this literally ended up being a year apart. Yeah. And um, both times it's been so rewarding. Um, it's very tiring. I mean, I was talking to Brandy about this last night. It's the last two or three weeks, even when you're not working on it and you're doing something else, it's on your mind like 95% of the it's time. Working. Like yeah. it's just your brain is firing on all cylinders nonstop. But I really enjoy it because it's rewarding. I mean, I know we talk about this and there's a place for August sports, especially out here where you're talking about backup defensive linemen and, you know, walk ons at ASU or U of Arizona. And, you know, those are all great and fans care about that. But I'd rather spend my mental capacity at this point in the year on something like this. And so, I definitely think this might become a yearly thing. I mean, at that when this doc came, I kind of figured there wasn't one this year. Sometimes they just kind of need to fall in your lap. And all of a sudden, when I kind of had given up on that and was kind of planning some other stuff for summer, it was, oh, here's a doc right on your desk. Let's 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 get after this and do it. So there's definitely more. Um, but until then, it's uh, get away for a bit. I might try to go up north for a little bit this week and then uh, get ready for football season. Um, it'll good be a stuff. different animal. It's good stuff. Great work. Good job. Well done. And all the platitudes, uh, you, you guys crushed it. ALS to ashes, the Corey Nocta story documentary. Jordan Spurgeon was the executive producer of it. Brandy Aguilar right alongside him, the two of them doing terrific work. It's up on the website. It is on our YouTube channel. It will be on Valley Sports Arizona. It is airing now. Good seeing you. Thanks, Brad. You too. We're back with more after this timeout.